This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. and welcome to Dubai, one of the best-known cities in the Middle East and part of the United Arab Emirates. For centuries, a harbour town known for trading goods at the various souks. Today, the markets are bright modern malls and the traders are tourists shopping and visiting the Burj Khalifa and the Burj Al Arab, which sit easily beside river rides on a dhow, as well as the museums that honour the traditions of old. The racing culture goes back a very long way here and camel racing is still happening but it's for a different sort of competition that we've flown to the Emirates. We are in Dubai at the Dubai Autodrome already for the 13th time this, that we organize this, the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. This is the second biggest motorsport event in the UAE. This is something that we are proud of. 24 Hour has been a long lasting event. It has the uh, competitiveness, uh, it has also uh, the entertainment in it, and the sociable activities. Drivers come here from all over the world, professionals, but most are so-called gentleman drivers. However, that doesn't make the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai an easy race in which to compete. I think if you can race in Dubai, you can race anywhere. So everybody that comes here, they are like an A1 driver in my books. Everyone's so great out there and the atmosphere is lovely and the weather's pretty good for January. Creventic, the organizers have decided to make the whole season even more attractive to touring car entrants. We always have different classes, but what is new this year is that we have two series combined in one race. We have the GT series, that's one, and the second one is the TCE series. So also we have two pole positions. We are very happy to have the 92 uh, entrant um, as a driver and as in charge of motorsport. I always think of a driver and that means you have to have also uh, um, uh, a circuit that you can maneuver and this is a place that actually brings over 40 nationalities. I welcome them and I hope they will have a safe but competitive event. This festival of motorsport started a week ago with the Hankook 3x3 three three hours of Dubai. No GT and touring cars there, only the cars from the Creventic prototype series. Yeah, it's been amazing. We did uh, the prototype race last weekend, uh, had a few days off and uh, back again now for the 24 hour. And even before the racing has started, the event is attracting attention. Yeah, this is Dubai. This is what makes Dubai so special. The crowd, you can see it behind me, people all over the place. And that makes it Dubai. The Saudi Arabia sports minister is one of the spectators. And he's here not just because his cousin is racing. Yes, I'm definitely supporting my cousin and supporting the Saudi drivers and I'm re representing Saudi Arabia here. So we would like to, uh, to give all what we can do as much as support to our drivers, even to the national uh, UAE drivers as well. We'd like to support them. They are brothers to us and we'd like to welcome all the European teams and all other teams from Asia, from America, to welcome them here in their second home. Thursday afternoon and two qualifying sessions, one for the Touring Car Endurance Series and one for the GT Endurance Series. Well, I pushed as hard as I could. I didn't have much track time before, so it was quite uh, quite tricky for me to, to go out there. Uh, it went quite well. I lost three tenths in my fastest lap due to traffic, so that costed our top three spot in the qualifying, which is a bit unfortunate, but we're happy with P7, especially if you look at, uh, at the driver names who are here, and uh, the competition is really, really high level, so we are happy to be here on this place. The qualifying was really good. Um, yesterday uh, I, uh, I did the, the pole position in SP2 class. So it's the first race of this car, first race of the year. So we are all really happy. 
Most of the excitement came at the end of the qualifying. At the end of the stint, uh, uh, I ran out of fuel. And then uh, the car stopped, but uh, I had some problem to, to reinitialize, uh, to restart the engine, so it was... I was uh, in a position really dangerous, so I decided to get out of the car. The triple seven set the fastest time. Full joy in the pit garage for MS7 by WRT. For sure, we have some joy because we were on, on pole and uh, Chris did a, a, an incredible lap. But unfortunately, uh, he could not see uh, a yellow flag in the last corner, which was uh, on the outside of the track. And he was concentrating a bit on the on his line and uh, he could not see the yellow so we improve on the yellow so we we've been um, having this this lap uh, cancel and uh, which which is fair which is the which is the rules so the pole position has gone back to the 964 Lamborghini of GRT Grasser well i was leading more or less the biggest part of the ch of the of the quality session and in the end um, the Audi went a little bit quicker but there was a yellow flag in the last sector so i had to back off uh, so we kind of expected that we get the, the, the pole position and the, the lap time would have been uh, deleted. So, What can we expect from the race? We want to win the class um, and yeah, so far everything looks good. We are in qualifying on P3, but uh, I think the qualifying is not so important. Uh, it's, it's still a long journey, 24 hours. In this race it's very hard to expect anything because it's a, a, such a long race, but um, I expect, hopefully, if we don't have any issues uh, with the car, uh, then we're definitely fighting for a win. Uh, we're polling them, which is great, uh, and sixth overall. To be honest, the first stint, we're just going to try and be consistent, get through the first couple of hours. And then afterwards, obviously, the overall goal is to be on the podium. Uh, but let's, let's see what happens. It's a long race. So last year we started last because the engine uh, failed just before we started. So we started 100th and finished second last year. So uh, we know what it's like at the back, so this will be a bit easier. Even before the race has started, there's another retirement. Number 96 of Optimum Motorsport. Fortunately for the Audi, we sustained damage in the night practice, um, which, which meant it was probably a bit unsafe to enter the car. It could have been repaired, um, but in this sort of environment, maybe to have rushed it would have been the wrong decision so with the engineering team and the management team we consulted and uh, decided that the safest thing to do was not to uh, enter the car so all the team hopes rest with their second entry the number 232 racing in the touring car series part of this event the pace car pulls off the track and 90 cars from the gt and tce series are turning onto the main straight for the start of the 24 hours of dubai The lights are out, and Mirko Bortolotti in the green 964 Lamborghini takes a lead in the first few metres. Behind him, Christopher Meese in the 777, up from fourth and battling for second. But the two Black Falcon entries are fighting hard to keep second and third position. Yeah, it was a lot of traffic, but uh, everyone was very, very um, gentleman uh, for uh, at, at, the, at the first uh, on, on the first uh, round, I think. Yeah. yeah. This is the second largest racing event in the United Arab Emirates and hosts a packed field. It's a joy to see the variety of cars battling in the different classes. After just a couple of laps, Peter Koch is in the pit lane with his KTM crossbow. The car had no uh, good engine response and uh, the first thought was that it was, a tech, it was an electrical problem and uh, it was an electrical problem. And after reset and we sometimes we disconnected and uh, reconnected the devices, it was just a guess, and then it worked. Never predict the outcome of an endurance race, as Mirko Bortolotti is finding out. He's going well, but a tyre blows, handing the leads to his competition. Once Mirko was gone, uh, I had the lead and I tried to pull a gap. I could open up the gap a couple of times, but then you have uh, you hit big traffic, five, six cars at the same time, and you really have to, to stop on the track, more, more or less. And he was back on my uh, bumper again, so... It was tough, uh, but again, I could open up and it went a bit up and down, but it was, it was a very good fight, uh, yeah, the whole hour long. The GRT Grasser Racing team react quickly and decide to do a full pit stop and get Rolf Nation to do the second stint. The number 78 Speed Lover entry is off the track. After 40 minutes, I think, there was a, a Lamborghini who would uh, touch me on the, on the back. Yeah, but it was a... I, have to I had to enter to the box. 
and uh, the, the wheel was, uh, was broken. So we changed the wheel and we could uh, get out uh, again. With the 78 having been hit in the rear right, and just further up the pit lane, the number seven with damage to its front left, it's more likely it wasn't a Lamborghini, but a Mercedes AMG that was involved. It's cat and mouse at the head of the field, with Chris Meese in the Audi 777 right on the tail of the leading AMG Mercedes. It's a problem for the number 28 car of Dubai-based GP Extreme team that causes the first code 60. Unfortunately, we had a gearbox problem when during the first stint when Axel was driving. Problem that was uh, too big to, uh, to fix, or at least it would have taken too much time, so we decided to retire. Uh, it, it, it was just gone at one point uh, from, from out of nothing, so he lost almost all the drive, so there was no way he could fix it anymore. Teams take this opportunity to get their car to the pit lane for the allowed 50% of their fuel allowance. As soon as the Code 60 is lifted, the pole sitter has another problem with the tyre, but it's not that issue that a second Code 60 is called. The touring car number 786 of Scan Grip Racing and the number 85 GT entry of Pro Sport Performance have had a collision and left a long strip of engine fluids on the track to be cleaned up by the marshals. Yeah, I was following the Audi and uh, yeah, unfortunately got turned and just had contact on the front and uh, that, that was enough to damage the radiator. So yeah, it's, it's the first time I've had to bring the car in from damage that I've caused and have it repaired and lose a lot of laps. So. The fluids were not from Adam's car. Yeah, so the, the car that we had contact with, uh, I think they must have damaged the radiator or something, and, or an oil radiator. And they stayed on the track. I, I made it around all the way around the outside. Uh, I could see a bit of steam coming from the car, so... Again, teams take the opportunity to get their cars into the pit lane for penalties, tyres and fuel. The race leader is in. But smart strategy from the team, they didn't send the 911 to the fuel station straight away. We saw that there is a big queue, so we stayed out. Because otherwise, you stay in a queue and you wait so long. So it's better to stay on the track and then wait for the right moment. Which is exactly what the team did. Within that code 60, they called the car in twice more. Cars not allowed to take more than half of their fuel allowance during a code 60. But there's nothing to stop the team coming in for a second time. But did those three visits to the pit lane cost them the lead? After the first three hours of racing, Herbeth Motorsport is indeed holding on to the lead. The Black Falcon number three is second overall. Car collection number 33 is third. In the touring cars, the leader is currently the CWS Junetta number 178. This year, the 991 class is split into amateur and professional entries. MRS GT Racing number 90 leads the AM class. Their number 26 car is second. And third is the number 79 from Speed Lover Team. Event sponsor Beza Group have their Mercedes entered in the GT4 class, leading at the moment with the Phoenix number 248 second, Perfection 239 third in class. This is Endurance. I think my this is an endurance uh, moment is especially the stints from two hours and then especially with the Mercedes it's like a uh, proper car so if you want to be quick you have to really fight with it and that's for two hours long with the temperatures yeah then I think this is really endurance so uh, as well physically but as well uh, racing wise so. In 2006, at the first running of the Creventic 24 Hours of Dubai, the motorsport landscape in the UAE was very different to now. With no history of motorsport in the region, there was simply no local knowledge on how to put together an event like this. However, that's all changed as experience gains on events like the 24 Hours have allowed the local officials, organisers and marshals to attain the highest international standards. And it shows. We've been doing it for 13 years, so uh, we finally succeeded in, in, in creating the, 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 the whole society or the whole community behind motorsports, and that is all the way from drivers, mechanics to marshals. Marshals play a key role in this, and with, with, the, with the help of the ATC UAE, the local ASN, we've managed to train a lot of local uh, marshals who are all enthusiasts, and they do this because they love it. That's why, that's why you you see the big improvement. As a result, the ATC has collected several awards. Yeah, motorsport, you cannot deny it anymore. I, if I talk in Dubai, I talk in the UAE, 
or I talk in the uh, um, in the area. I mean, uh, we just even won uh, the um, the best marshal of the year and for Formula One in, in uh, UAE. So to us, it is a culture. We are proud of the um, of the prizes, but the prizes does not make us sit. It makes us want to deliver more and to achieve more. Achievement comes in the members of the drivers, competitors, and also the staff and the volunteers with us. And here at the Dubai Autodrome, after an hour and a half in the pits, following repairs after their earlier crash, the number 85 Pro Sport is about to go back into the race. We had to drop the floor off the car, uh, the splitter. They've had to change all the front bumper, uh, one of the headlights and the main radiator. Uh, but sadly, it's not a five minute job. We've lost, I think, an hour and a half. But in this race, anything can happen, OK? We're not going to be able to get on the podium anymore, but we're going to push and maybe get back into the top 10 within our class. Not the first issue for the number 63 Porsche of Race Pro Motorsport. They're slow on the track. Yeah, I think it was just a, a failure of some kind. Um, so we had a drive shaft basically just snap uh, the bolt. So I'm not really sure particularly how it happened, but that's what happens sometimes in endurance racing. Michael Hirschman was having a great battle, and during that fight, he found out how strong polystyrene can be. I came uh, too quickly on uh, turn. Oh, I'm not sure now which turn, but uh, after the long uh, left, and um, I was too quick, so I went out with the car and touched the uh, uh, hundred sign. But I, here you go, you come so quick that uh, it broke actually the front of the car. So we have to replace it now. There were electrical problems earlier on for the number 246, but now all going well. I think the car is running excellent. Um, yeah, we try to, to give our best to, to come to the end. But uh, yeah, we try to put the fast drivers in now in the night and do a double stint, and then we can try to, to, to gain some positions again. There's smoke at the pit lane entrance. It's the Ram Racing number five that's on fire. Suddenly at turn 14, I, I hear a strange noise. Uh, so I talked to the radio, uh, to Dan, and uh, decided to pit immediately. Um, pit lane entry, the car stopped completely, and there were flames coming out of the exhaust. Yeah, I need to see what's, uh, what's going on, but um, doesn't look good. I hope that they can fix it, not sure. Unfortunately, not possible to repair the car. We wave goodbye to the Dubai Deer with an extraordinary view. The number three Mercedes still battling for the lead. We're running uh, very close to the leader, uh, a couple of seconds behind, and uh, everything is going to plan. So uh, we're in second position. And hopefully, uh, yeah, we can we can take the lead at some point. Now in the darkness, the racing gets even harder. Now it's getting darker, so that was the biggest challenge for me. I felt that the track is more and more dirty, dirty and dirtier, so it makes the makes the whole thing slippery, and you have to be concentrated like crazy. You don't have to focus on the other cars; you have to focus on yourself. That's the worst thing if you do it on the wrong side. Going into the darkness became really tough and challenging in the end. Uh, with a lot of guys coming out um, from the pits, um, getting directly into the darkness. So really, really big traffic uh, towards the end of the stint, but I had a good stint. But the target is still um, to bring the Lamborghini the first time on the podium here in Dubai. If there's a major repair required, it's not only a question if the mechanics can handle the job, but also, is it worth it? The car was performing very, very well. We, we lead the class, the 9 and 1 AM class for a long time, but then uh, we had a um, broken gearbox, so we had to decide what we are doing. We stopped the car, or we investing 40,000 euros, and we all decided we investing 40,000 euros. We got a new gearbox, brand new gearbox from Porsche, and now we try to catch up. And with the 187 Race Union Porsche back on track, let's take a look at the standings. At 9 o'clock in the evening, still the Herbert Mercedes number 911 Porsche leading. They have a lap advantage on the number 3 Mercedes Black Falcon. Third overall, Manti Racing with the number 12 Porsche. It's the AM entry of Herbert Motorsport leading the race overall, so also leads the A6 AM class. Second, the number 25 of HTP Motorsport. The number 16 of SPS Automotive Performances in third. 
in SPX. Tsunami RT37 Porsche is leading, two laps ahead of the MRS number 89 Porsche, and the GDL Racing Middle East Lamborghini number 87 is third. You can enjoy the Creventic race series in many ways. Obviously, you could be watching this program, you could follow the live stream, or listen to RadioLeMond.com, or be here and watch it live at the track. Now, there's a new way, gaming. And there are cars that are racing here today that you could have a go with yourself on a simulator like Race Room. For sure, for the team, it's, uh, it's good to have uh, the cars in the video game. Yeah, for sure, definitely, it helps uh, the image. It, uh, it's always good, a good image to the sponsors and so on, so it's very good. Uh, if the, the younger or next generation can know the traditional Gulf rivalry with this character. Oh, it's great. I really would like to try it. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. You can, I think it's on Race Room. Uh, you, you can see that, yeah. So they, they like the library a lot, uh, so they asked us and we said, yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously it's a very good idea to bring it into the game. And this simulation is so up to date that one of the cars and the liveries that are racing here in Dubai this weekend is already in the game. It's this race livery, yes. The thing is, behind our team, um, we are race union. That means we are in sim racing, e-sport, and in real racing. And now we bring them both together. And this is the reason we have our car in race room and iSport and in all these famous things, you know, the, the young kids and also the older kids now are playing. And this was the idea behind our partner and sponsor race union. And we are very proud to, to present this company here. Driving at night is different from the daytime. Good news then that some of the drivers have already competed in Kravetnik organised races before and therefore have experienced racing in the dark. Yes, for the 24 hours of Paul Ricard uh, last season. Uh, you have more lights there, so here it's uh, a bit more harder, but uh, there are so many cars that they bring lights on the track. <laughs> well, at the moment we had a small technical problem, so we have to catch up now. Uh, there was something with the suspension. So uh, we had to fix it. So and this cost us three laps. We hope the others have also a bit of problems. The Alphab McLaren is in the pits with a melted intake manifold. The crew looking for a way to protect it and stop it melting again. That was in the beginning when we just thought it was the plastic pipe that had melted. But now when we looked inside the compressor inlet, we also saw that it was plastic material in the compressor wheel. Then we cannot start the engine and continue. The turbochargers and the engine will break down. Commiserations to all have worked hard on the car, but there's still pride in the achievement. We has beaten the record for a McLaren 570 SGT4. It's the longest stint it had done so far. Previously only four hours, now almost ten. There's a spin for Roland Eggeman, but he gets the car turned around and continues his race. The number 63 Porsche of Race Pro Motorsport already has experienced a number of issues in the Hankook 24 hours of Dubai. Dubai is a very, very tough race and we're feeling the full brunt of it. Just at the end of my stint there, uh, we were about to go for a double and the engine belt uh, fall, fell off basically, so lost battery power and lost water. So, um, so we're in the box again and we'll be back out on the track in, in another five minutes or so to, to press on for the rest of the race. Anything goes here. Former Formula One driver from Argentina, Norberto Fontana, is one of the drivers. Ah, the car was uh, nice to drive. Uh, I was driving uh, two hours and I already was half an hour more in the car. It's nice to drive in the night. I was driving clear and uh, careful. Norberto is not happy after contact with a GT3 car. Normally he's faster than me in the straight. He, he could wait a few corners and overtake me in the straight. I don't know what he think. And uh, we are waiting now. So it's a shame because we lost a, a big chance to, to win the race. We was leading already and they are working. And we are going to put the car back in the track. 88 speed lover Porsche in the pits and the mechanics working all around the car. He uh, went for the refueling, so he put on, he put off his, his big lights, but he had the supplementary lights on. And then he went out of the refueling 
and he, he didn't realize that the normal lights were off. So we had to call him in and then we changed drivers at the same time. Gabriele Piana is at the wheel of the number two Black Falcon. Earlier in the race it was three laps down to the leader, but since then has recovered. Car is doing okay. We had a bit of uh, of delays at the beginning, but now it's fine. Uh, we are we are back in the fight, back in the lead. Uh, it was not so easy at the beginning because there was not so many code 60, so uh, we were expecting a bit more code 60. But now it's going well. It's a close fight. Uh, it's very close for the three first cars. Uh, so yeah, it will be still very long and very tough. For me, it's quite hard because I'm new in this series, but. Uh, I quite enjoy it and it's getting better every time. We had a little problem with the car, but uh, just enjoy it, have fun and do the best what we can. The track is good, so many, many cars here. So it's a big fight. I think the level is much higher than last year and the year before. And we have many, many pro drivers here and also the, the night speed is higher, maybe three, four seconds than last year and the year before. So it's a, it's a hard race. Dimitri, however, got into difficulty when the La Mera Cup number 237 had a spin. Just came out from the turn, yeah, and the car spinned around already. So, but I couldn't, uh, I, I could go, go outside. So, because the car was in the middle of the track, no lights, no nothing. So, and yeah, it was an accident. I hit the car. Uh, it was only one big scary moment when the car collection already crashed before us, because it was uh, 50 meter be before. So, uh, I totally go to the right with the steering, and uh, Dries go to the left. So, and it was only in the middle. It was uh, was space. So. Very scary moment. Extraordinary resilience shown by both teams. It's what we've come to expect in the Creventic series. Both cars will be back on the track later in the night. Easier than, than the previous years because the, the cars in general are faster, so it means you have less traffic. But still, it's really packed. Uh, there, are, ha there happened a lot less crashes in this stage of the race than uh, last year. So normally at this moment in the race, we will have maybe only 80 or 70 cars left. But now I think we still have around 90 cars which is really good, but also more difficult. End of the Code 60, and the battles continue exactly where they'd left off. Given the amount of race tape on the 239, there's clearly already been some contact, and now it needs to be pushed into the garage. Yeah, we had a suspension failure. Uh, they're upright on the, on the right front. I had an impact with another car and just snapped. So uh, we are changing the front bumper as well. It had some uh, some early impacts, so it was damaged. So we might as well change it while we were in the pit. Uh, same with the brakes, new disc and pads, because we had to do that anyway. We were in a pretty good position beforehand, but now it's uh, it doesn't look too bright, but we have to be positive. We started at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's now 2 in the morning. We're halfway there. Yes, 12 hours down, still 12 hours to go. And in the GT class, it was very exciting. In the, yeah, in the first 12 hours, we had nine different class leaders, nine different series leaders. So yeah, it's very exciting. In the Touring Car Endurance Series, it's the number 129 Seat of LMS Racing by Baz Kooting that leads by just on a lap. And here are the standings in the GT Series. The top four still on the same lap after 12 hours of racing. Manti Racing's number 12 Porsche has a 10 second gap back to the number three second and the number two in third. The triple seven of MS7 sitting in fourth. In SP2, the number 58 Mark Carr of VDS Racing Adventures is well ahead of the 201 KTM Crossbow from CCS. In third, the 246 Crossbow of KTM Motorsport Australia. There's a big gap in the 991 Pro Class 2 the fact number 62 Porsche has a solid 13 lap lead over the RS car number 82 in second, third in the 991 Pro class, the number 63 Race Pro Motorsport Porsche. This is Endurance. My hashtag this is Endurance moment is probably the oh dear I'm going to get hit by a Lamborghini because he's not, he's outbraked himself but he missed me. Just as you close your eyes for a nap, someone tugs on your toe, and there's always something to do. That's a long shift. Mechanics are essential for a team to race in this series. But how do you get the experience to join the team as a mechanic? That's one of the reasons some of the teams have student technicians joining their ranks. We cooperate with uh, college students, so some of the mechanics is uh, used to be a student. 
So uh, one of the purpose of our racing activity is to grow up together with them. The speed lover team from Belgium have brought students along for the first time. Yeah, it was a whole new experience. One teacher, he took four of his uh, students with him. We made a whole project about it. There was a whole publicity also in Belgium that they would do a thing like that. So for the first time they're here. And I, I really must say they work like hell. We took um, four students from the school to, get, to, to come here to work on the cars. So we took the four best of them. Uh, it was like a competition we, do, we did in, um, uh, for the resu result, you know, in school. And we took the four best here for Dubai. That's the kind of motivation, yeah. Working in motor racing, very different from working at a local garage. It's a very hard job. They are um, kind of impressed of how hard it is to work here one week on, on the cars. You know, they, they didn't know it. It's not holiday. The drivers are very happy with these new additions to the crew. Uh, yes, there are some, uh, some, some good people here in the, in the team. They are very young, it's, uh, but it's, it's nice to work with, uh, with them. And it seems the racing bug has bitten the students. I asked the students, what do you like most? Going to school or come with me? They all said, we would like to come with you. So. The crew stand by for their cars and shortly after halfway, there's an opportunity for them to show their creative take on car repairs and prove their worth. A spin for Alex Welsh in the MRS GT Racing number 90. Before this incident, they were leading in the 991 AM class, but after the recovery, the team took an hour and 45 minutes to get their car back into the race. At the end of the result in Code 60, the KTM 201 of CCS Racing catches fire. Cheryl Arndt quickly parks the car close to the pit lane entry. A smart move as the fire goes out when the car comes to a standstill. The car is pulled to the pits and after just a couple of minutes work is back out into the race. It's not just incidents that require assistance from the crew. In the night we changed the front lights. We were starting out with yellow lights and they were not strong enough and uh, we had an accident so we could only see what came on the right, left side of the car and the right side we just have to memorize what were there. So. It seems for hours the top three has consisted of the number three, the number two and the triple seven. Yes, but there were a couple of incidents. We had uh, some uh, issue with the steering and we lost some time because of that. At this stage in the race, you know, position are more difficult to, to gain. We've been leading, depends on the, on the pit stop really and the sequence of uh, refueling and so on. So we've been leading, we've been in the top three for a long time. But unless the cars in front have problems, I don't think we can do much better than uh, fifth place. You might think then that the teams hate the fact that they could easily lose the battle for the lead. However, it seems the opposite is true. That's what makes this uh, race very attractive. There's a lot of cars, a lot of incidents, a lot of actions, and uh, you need a little bit of luck. And if you do little mistakes, driving mistakes or team mistakes, and then you have to pay the price. Most teams will have the same conclusion when things go wrong. This is endurance. Yeah, we were uh, on track with a good position, but unfortunately it's the race, Andrew race, so we have some problem on track, we lose some oil, so the car stop uh, on track, and uh, at the end we had uh, some engine problem, so race finished for us. A mesmerising sky at the break of day, and especially here in Dubai, you can see why they call this the golden hour. It was great, I had sunrise, they... Uh... They rolled me out of bed with about 10 minutes warning and threw me in the car. It was, it was an awesome stint though. Track's still lovely, traffic's calmed down a little bit as it does at this time of day. Uh, beautifully rub it in, so yeah, it was a really good stint. Almost 18 hours of racing are completed. The battles are still raging on, as if the race was only 18 minutes old. Every position in class important. The points gathered for this race, not just for the win, but also for the championship of the continents, with races in Europe and the US to come later in the year. Problem for the Perfection Racing Europe, Janetta number 239. I spun off uh, in the corner just before the long straight, and uh, somebody uh, hit me in, in the left front wheel. And uh, I don't know, they will have to fix it now somehow. Although they don't yet know which car hit them, 
That should be an easy task for CSI Dubai. Well, this is uh, this was found inside my, the backside of my car, so uh, I guess it shouldn't be too hard to find somebody who's missing this. Number three Mercedes is showing the number one in red on its LED panel. The red is for the GT series, the one shows it's leading. In the Touring Car Endurance Series, the Liquid Molly Volkswagen number 130 has the number one, but its number is green. After 18 hours, Black Falcon is putting their stamp on this race. The number three Mercedes leading, the sister number two car second overall, and the fastest A6 AM team is HTP Motorsport. Their number 25 is running third overall. If we continue with just the A6 Pro cars, third in class, the Mantai number 12 Porsche, the number 964 Lamborghini of GRT Grasse fourth, and the 777 Audi in fifth. The highest non-A6 car is the 37 Porsche of Tsunami in tenth, they're leading the SPX class, with Leipert number 10's Lamborghini second, and the GDL Racing Middle East number 87 in third. There's a story behind every single car on track here at the Dubai Autodrome. It's a new Porsche Cup car, so it's a four litre engine inside. Very, very powerful car and yeah, it's, uh, it's pure fun to drive, especially on this uh, track. It's quite new for me. Uh, the first race here for the Kaventic uh, and it's uh, everything is working very well. I feel very uh, confident. Honestly, um, I think Audi uh, have perfected the car in terms of an all-in-all -all package in reliability, speed and the car being a very easy car to drive. Um, I think it's, it's one of the most amazing products in uh, motorsports and I'm happy to, uh, to be a customer. This Porsche Cup car, Generation 2, is a great car and as you see, some of our contenders like MRS Racing and Brosport and all the others, they are really, and also we, we are really quick, so a cup car can end here in this race in the top 10. Everyone is here because they love to race the 24 hours of Dubai. But for one team, it's even more important. They're here to honor a driver. Harald Müller, the initial founder of the company, created this car based on a Ford GT. We homologated on GT3 standard and um, participated in lots of ADAC GT Master races during the last years. The founder, unfortunately, he, he, left, uh, he left us, he died a couple of years ago. Then we uh, slowed down our activities. Now in the Dubai 24 hours and are more active again. And all this is thanks to his widow. The widow, Miss Müller, basically uh, we're doing like, like a this entire event uh, for her, her died husband. So uh, it's quite an emotional race for her to be with this track, with the entire team uh, back on track. The race leader has just had its pit stop and gets back out without relinquishing the lead. Daylight now, but the crew get some sleep whenever they can. The number eight started this race as a new adventure and they're happy with where they are now. Pretty good, I have to say. Um, like all the races we participated so far, they have not been 24-hour races. So this is the first time we participate with this car in, in the 24-hour race. Um, and so far, we're still going. Did the last stint in the morning. The sun was still very low, but um, I had a very good stint. I can go quick, fast. We lost the uh, um, uh, first position. At one o'clock in the night, we had a technical defect. Now we are on position four and try to get back on three. Maybe. Average speed in these endurance races, much faster than there used to be in the olden days, which seems not so long ago. Yeah, no, it's a 24 hour sprint race, isn't it? And then you can see it just, you know, all the drivers in our class, everyone's just pushing for 24 hours. It's no longer a kind of endurance race while you drive within your limits it's still it's a sprint race every one hour and 15 20 minutes half hour whatever those stints are and that's a testament to all the manufacturers and what they've done with these cars and and if everybody else is going to do it you need to do it in order to be competitive most competitive car up to now the number three mercedes amg gt obviously the amg is a is a really reliable car it's a really fast car uh, which we can actually see we were always one of the fastest cars out there and yeah it, yeah, it really felt awesome on the night and uh, yeah, I had really a lot of fun.
The SPS Automotive Performance number 24 has had a high-speed impact with the barrier. From this angle, it looks not to be so bad, but as the car is towed away, you can see the extent of the damage. And on the barrier, a testament to the impact that occurred, the 24 has left its imprint. Back to green flag racing, but not for long. I saw some cars slowing down on the back straight, so I, well, I, I, I slowed down, I just went off throttle and really soft on the brakes. And uh, yeah, then one car hit me really bad from behind and yeah, there was nothing I could do. I, I, there was no chance to avoid it, but yeah, sometimes uh, shit happens. I know to see the, the cars for extreme slowly drive on the, the end of the this the right line from and uh, in, in this moment where I for undertake the, the car for me and I, I go out I see the car will stand for me and can no, not for me not break and turn the car and then crash in the black falcon Mercedes yes yeah the Hofer guys uh, came to apologize straight away so yeah sorry for us mm. After the big uh, crash in the end of the straight, I think I got some uh, some dirt in the front of my uh, radiator. Uh, so the uh, water temperature raised to 130 degrees, so I had to go in to clean it. And just when I left the pit lane, then my uh, suspension broke and I got a flat tire as well. So, uh, so the tire basically uh, destroyed the whole rear. And uh, so I had to go back to the garage and I think we were there for like 10, 15 minutes. So, uh, so yeah, it wasn't uh, really a uh, nice last stint, but uh, I had to deal with it anyway. So, Essential service for the new race leader as they come in to change their brake discs, which had nearly disintegrated. This has cost them a whole lap, but with a four-lap lead, they had time to spare. Although the track hasn't changed, going back to racing in the daytime is different from racing in the dark. The car reacts to the heat a little bit different, so as, as the sun comes up, the temperature rises, the car reacts a little bit differently, um, so we can't push quite as hard as we were through the night. So we have to reserve a little bit more and kind of keep a bit within ourselves and within the tyres during the day. You can enhance your chances of a podium position if you have multiple cars entered, especially if they're competing in three different classes, SP2, 991 Am and SPX. The weekend has started very bad, as you know. We had a crash with uh, car 88. We had to work till late night to repair it, but from then on, it went better and better. We had one little issue with uh, my Dutch driver's car, the standard cup car, a stone pierced the radiator. So we had to replace the radiator, and they dropped some places, but the three cars are still running, so it's okay. Just three hours to go, let's have a look at the intermediate standings. The number two, Mercedes AMG GT from Black Falcon has a three lap lead now over the 964 Lamborghini of GRT Grasser. Monti Racing, the Porsche number 12 in third. With an Audi, the 777 in fourth, it's a variety of mix at the top of the standings. In A6 Am, there's a two-lap gap from the leader, the SPS Automotive number 16, to the 18 Chevrolet V8 Racing in second. Also two laps back from second to third, the HTP Motorsport number 25. Much tighter in the 991 Am class, MRS Racing number 21 leading, Race Pro number 67 is second, and Jewel Racing number 95 third. This is Endurance. This is endurance, that makes fun. Yeah, this is endurance. This is endurance. It's a picture that I always see. It's people sleeping in the garages, people sleeping in their motor homes, waiting for their next uh, stint, you know. Uh, creature comforts are completely forgotten. Everyone is focused on winning. This is, this is endurance. The 24-hour GT Endurance Series couldn't exist without sponsors. Partners like Hankook are essential to the organisation of a series like this. But it's not just about the title sponsor. Jordans.nl have been supporting the Creventic organised series from the very beginning. Uh, Jordan Sign and Promotion is already for 12 years exclusive supplier for the 24-hour racing uh, for the uh, Hankook or uh, the Creventic uh, races. 
we produce uh, all the banners before the race, but uh, to, to fix it, uh, we must do it on the race, on the track, uh, on the paddock, um, around uh, the, the, the secretary uh, room. The partner decals are prepared in advance and sent to the teams. Quite often, teams need new ones. When the teams are putting uh, the, the, the stickers on the, on the car and uh, it's damaged, it's uh, not going well, then they come to me here on the, on the race and they ask me for new numbers and we make immediately new numbers uh, because uh, they come uh, not uh, through the scrutineering without number. It's very important. There's always been a sticker shop at the circuit to supply the new decals and this year they've expanded their service to supply the teams too. We started this year to uh, produce uh, on the circuit here uh, and that's very important for the teams. Uh, they missed sponsor logos and we can, we can produce the sponsor logos in full color here on the circuit and that's a very uh, new product for, uh, for us. We're in the final part of the race, the leader working their way through the field to try and stay ahead or perhaps even increase the three lap lead that they hold. Three lap sounds are locked, but it's nothing if the car has difficulties. That's one of the reasons why endurance racing is so exciting. You have a flawless race for 23 and a half hours, but an incident 30 minutes before the end of the race could, in a split second, undo everything you've been working for. The opposite is also true. Even if you have a big repair on your hands, it's worthwhile to do it because there'll be ample time to race afterwards. Perfect example, the 82 Porsche of RS Car Motorsport they were towed in at half four in the morning, but now, seven hours later, they're ready to go back out and race. Uh, we just repaired the gearbox because it's broken uh, and we can find uh, another one. But uh, the, uh, our friends help us and we take the gearbox from another car. And now we fixed and now we need to uh, make about uh, 50 laps to make a result because we need to 60% of the race. That said, the 60% rule is important, especially for those running the full championship and looking for season points. Yes, we need to make a more than 60% of the laps of our leader. Then we have a classified in this race and take a point. After just half an hour in the garage for Klaus Backler, another car is coming back to the track. It's the 63 Porsche of Race Pro Motorsport. Uh, now we are quite happy. Uh, actually, we had a second time an issue with the timing belt. Um, but okay, nothing we can do. It's fixed. We have to go out and finish the race. Uh, dropped us back another 20 minutes, but okay, second time, boys. Improved their changing time by five minutes, so yeah, something to be happy. We try to finish the race in the pro class now on P2. The last scheduled pit stop for the race leader goes ahead under the watchful eye of many professional photographers as well as mobile phone cameras. Jules Westwood, out of the dual racing Porsche. Happy to have raced, happy to be out of the car. I, I haven't raced for like a year and a half, um, so to come back and do a 24 hour race, it's uh, physically quite demanding. Um, and obviously the, in the, the daytime, it's now got quite hot in the car. So I was struggling towards the end of the stint. I was, I was glad for the driver change. We started with a full day of competition ahead of us. That turned into hours, and now just minutes of racing remain. The anticipation grows in the pit boxes, and with just seconds to go, it's the pit wall that is ready to cheer home the number two Mercedes AMG GT as the winner of the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. The 964 was poised to be second. That turned out not to be the case. I knew that the Porsche was behind and uh, that we had to push a lot to, to get the second place. And uh, when we look from where we were starting from 80, we were almost 80 after the three punctures we had in the beginning of the race. So in the beginning, we didn't ever think to finish uh, on the podium. Now it's a little bit of pity that I spun, but that's racing, that's life. I did just over push, it was a mistake from my side. And yeah, that's racing. Sorry for my teammates, but in the end, we are really happy to be on the podium. It's all good and uh, we're really happy. Yeah, it was really interesting. Uh, as you see, it's 24 hours, but in the end, it's like a sprint race. Yeah, uh, we gave everything, they gave everything. We both have had problems, 
But in the end, uh, yeah, we are both there. It was a great fight in the end. Uh, it's good for us, P2. It's a great effort by the team, uh, from Porsche as well, all my teammates. So really thankful to, to all, the, all the people involved in, in that race. Thank you. The honor of the last stint and bringing the car home for victory, Abdulaziz Al Faisal. Uh, it's a long time coming. Uh, it's my second victory here, but it's, uh, it's a special one. The, this year it's been tough, a lot of competition, a lot of cars. And uh, yeah, thanks to the team, thanks to the drivers, my teammate, for keeping the car in one piece and bringing it home. Dubai has a great tradition of transporting the overall top three to the podium on camels. No exception this year, but with the GT Series and the TCE Series racing together, that meant there were more camels to bring the winners to the podium simultaneously. The top three in TCE, the 130 liquid Molly Volkswagen winning from the LMSC at number 129 second. Third, the Bonk Motorsport Audi. Three different manufacturers on the podium. Now let's take a look at the final standings of the GT Series. Black Falcon pacing themselves to hold on to their two lap lead in their Mercedes AMG GT3. Mantai Racing profited from the late mistake from the 964. Bad luck for the Austrian GRT Grasso Racing Team in their Lamborghini. In the classes, A6 Pro, the number two Mercedes, took the win. In the A6 Amateur class, it was the SPS Automotive Performance, number 16, who won and finished in an excellent fourth overall. The trophy for SPX will go back to the Ukraine in the hands of the Tsunami RT, number 37, Porsche team. The fastest 991 Pro car was the FAC Autotech 62. The 996 AM class was won by Race Pro Motorsports with their number 67 car. The Mark Focus number 58 of Belgium team VDS Racing Adventures won SP2. First and second positions in the GT4 category went to the brand new Audi R8 on its racing debut. The 248 from Phoenix took the victory. Our next race will be in England in the legendary circuit of Silverstone in the second weekend of March. We have the 24 hours of Silverstone for the TCE series and we have also the 12 hours of Silverstone for the GT and Proto series. And it will be nice if you will be there as a spectator or even better as a team or driver. A highly successful first ever combined race featuring the 24-hour GT Endurance Series along with the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series. Here we've been looking at the GTs, but in our next programme we'll be looking at the TCE Series. So make sure you find that one too. The next race in the Championship of the Continents will be the 6th and the 8th of July at Portimao. The first race of the European Series is the 12 hours from Silverstone. For more information, go to www.24hgtseries.com.